Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Wednesday morning. Today is February 17th, 2021. Um, let's just jump right into what we're doing today. We're finishing up 4.7 notes that we started yesterday. So today's part two. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into things. Yesterday, we talked about transformations of polynomial functions, and we actually graphed those transformations. Today we're actually just going to be writing the transformations of the polynomial functions. On some of our examples we will graph, but we're going to actually just write the new polynomial function after the transformation has occurred. So, this is example 3 in our book. Just like I said, it's just a continuation from yesterday. So example 3, writing transformed polynomial functions. It says let f of x equal x cubed plus x squared plus 1, write a rule for g, and then graph each function. Describe the graph of g as a transformation of the graph of f. So the first thing it wants me to do is to write a rule for g. And that's pretty much just telling me, hey, come up with this polynomial function of this um, transformation that's occurring here. So for letter a, I have g of x equals f of negative x. So, we're given f of x equals x cubed plus x squared plus 1, and it's telling me to let g of x equal f of negative x. So, in the f of x function, they replaced x with negative x right here. So that's essentially what they're telling me to do. They're telling me, hey, in your original function, f of x, replace all your x's with negative x and evaluate. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I have g of x equals f of negative x, so I go through and replace all my x's with negative x. And once again, I'm using this function up here. x to the third, I replace x with negative x, so I get negative x to the third. Plus x squared, I replace that x with negative x as well. <clears throat> and then I still have my plus 1 because that's still a part of my function. So now I can just evaluate this. g of x equals, if I have negative x raised to an odd power, that's just going to give me negative x cubed, negative x to that power. It's just going to make that have a negative in front of it. If I have a negative x to the second power, or to an even power, that would become positive, and then I still have my plus 1. So this would be my rule for g. So that's the first part of what the question is asking me to do. Write a rule for g. There's my rule for g right there, my new polynomial function after the transformation has occurred. Now it wants us to graph each function. So we, got some, we have some, a graph over here. And this is very similar to yesterday now, where it wants me to just graph both functions on the same graph. So... I am just using some x values to plug into my function to get f of x values, or aka y values. So I'm just going to use the same values I was using all day yesterday in the notes. So I have f of negative 2 equals negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 squared plus 1. Negative 2 cubed would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which would be negative 8. Negative 2 squared would be 4 plus 1. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. I'll use black in that box. <clears throat> so when I plug in negative 2, I get negative 3. 
So that's my first ordered pair for my f of x function. Negative 2, negative 3. So left 2, down 3. There's my first ordered pair. Now I'm going to go through these kind of quick. I think we're all comfortable, hopefully, plugging in x values to a function. So now I'm going to plug f of negative 1 in. So that'd be negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 squared plus 1. That'd be negative 1 plus 1 plus 1. 0 plus 1, which gives me 1. So when I plug negative 1 in, I get positive 1. So I'm going to go left 1, up 1. There's my second ordered pair. Now I'm not going to plug in 0, because we should be able to do that math in our heads. If I plug 0 in for x cubed, and x squared, those first two terms would be 0. So I'd get 0 plus 0 plus 1, which would be positive 1. So 0, comma 1. Now I need to plug 1 in. f of 1 would give me 1 cubed plus... 1 squared plus 1, that's just 1 plus 1 plus 1, which would give me positive 3. So right 1, up 3. And then finally, plugging 2 in. So f of 2, give me 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 1. That'd be 8 plus 4 plus 1, 12 plus 1, which is 13. So 2 comma 13, that's going to be off my graph. It's not going to be too far off though. It's just going to be slightly past that point, so I just need to make sure my arrow is going up towards that. So now I've got all my ordered pairs. Now I can graph my f of x function by connecting my points with my curve. Apologize for that crooked line. And once again, we're going up to 2, comma, 13. So there's roughly my sketch of my f function, f of x. Now it wants me to graph my g of x function on the same graph. So I've picked the same values once again. So I'm just going to go through and plug those in. So g of negative 2, that would give me negative, negative 8, which would be positive 8, plus 4, plus 1, so that would be 13. So I get negative 2, comma 13. Now I need to plug negative 1 in. That'd be negative negative 1, which is positive 1 plus 1 plus 1. So g of negative 1 equals 3. So negative 1, comma 3. Left 1, up 3. Plugging 0 in, once again I just get positive 1 here, because I get 0 plus 0 plus 1. So that's already graphed for me. Now plugging positive 1 in. That gives me negative 1 
plus 1 plus 1 be 0 plus 1 which is 1 So one comma one, right one up one. And then plugging two in. G of two. That'd give me negative eight plus 4 plus 1 should give me a negative 4 plus 1 which is negative 3 so I go right 2 down 3 so now I have all my points <coughs> graphed for my g of x function now once again I know over here to the left it's going to shoot up towards negative 2 comma 13 so I just need to make sure that arrow is going to, towards negative 2 13 and then I can go through and connect my points I'm actually going to use a different color for G so we can see it on the same graph So let's use red. So once again, it's shooting up towards negative 2, 13. And based on our notes from yesterday <clears throat> and from first semester about our um, transformations of functions we could have seen that f of negative x I could have known beforehand that that was going to be a reflection <clears throat> over my y-axis and that's exactly what it is in this case all my points were just re reflected directly over this axis of symmetry the y-axis they're all the same distance from that line so I should have been expecting that before I even graphed both of these functions. So if I plug in, if I do f of negative x, that's going to be a reflection over my y-axis. So that's actually the next part of what the question's asking me. After I graph the function, it wants me to describe the graph of g as a transformation of the graph of f. So we could say... The graph of g... is a reflection in the y-axis of f. And so now I've answered every part that it was asking me. I wrote the rule for g, I graphed both functions, and then I described the graph of g as a transformation of the graph of f. So knowing all that information and what I'm doing now, let's look at letter B. Letter B says G of X equals 3 times F of X. So once again, I want to write a rule for G. So I just want to pretty much do what they're telling me to do here. They said g of x equals 3 times f of x. So I want to multiply 3 times my whole function, f of x. Now before we move on, <clears throat> just like on the previous example, we could have seen what they were telling us to do and said, hey, that's going to be a reflection over the y-axis. So in this case, if I have a number being multiplied by my function, I know based on yesterday, that little chart that we had in our book and in our notes, and from first semester when we were talking about transformations, I know this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So, let's write this function first 
and then we'll graph it and we'll see that it's a vertical stretch. So what I'm doing for g of x is I'm multiplying 3 times my whole function. Just plugging f of x in for f of x into this new formula. So I just distribute that 3 through. 3 times x cubed is 3x cubed. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 1 is 3. So here is my rule for g. So there's my rule for g. There's the first part. Now I need to go and graph each function. We've already graphed f of x equals x cubed plus x squared plus 1. So for time's sake, I've already filled out the chart for that one and graphed it. So now all we need to do is <clears throat> fill in our t chart for my g of x function and graph those ordered pairs. So, plugging negative 2 in first. So g of negative 2. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then I have that plus 3 at the end. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. 3 times 4 is 12. And then I have that plus 3. Negative 24 plus 12 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 3 gives me negative 9. So when I plug negative 2 in, I get negative 9. Now I need to plug in negative 1. So g of negative 1. <laughs> negative 1 cubed is just negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 3 plus 3 that gives me 0 plus 3 which is positive 3 so when I plug negative 1 in I get 3 once again we should be able to do the math with 0 in our head if I plug 0 in for my x's those first two terms are going to be 0 so I get 0 plus 0 plus 3 which gives me 3 and now I can move on and plug in positive 1. So g of 1, I get 3 times 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared plus 3. 1 cubed is 1 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9. So you get 1 comma 9. And then lastly, plug in positive 2. They give me 3 times 8 plus 3 times 4 plus 3. 24 plus 12 plus 3. 36 plus 3, which gives me 39. So 2, comma, 39. So I need to go through and graph these ordered pairs. Uh, I'll go ahead and use red again. So negative 2, negative 9. So I'm going to go left 2, down 9. Negative 1, comma 3. Left 1, up 3. And then I get 0, comma 3. So I'm not going left to right any. I'm just going up 3 on my y-axis. 
1 comma 9. So write 1 up 9. And then 2 comma 39, that's going to be way up off my graph, so I just need to make sure my arrow is going kind of towards that point. So now I can connect all my points with my smooth curve. Make your graph better than my graph. My graph is not very good. But, like we said earlier, we can see that our graph was kind of taken by the two points and stretched vertically. Taken by the two, the top and the bottom and stretched vertically. So, that's the last part of what my question is asking. It's asking us to describe the transformation Describe the graph of G as a transformation of the graph of F. So we could say G is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 of F. So that's me describing G as a transformation of F. The graph of G is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 of F. So kind of similar to what we did yesterday, it's just adding that first part of actually writing the rule for the transformation. So let's move on to example 4. It says let the graph of G be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, followed by a translation 3 units up of the graph of f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared. All it wants us to do right here is write a rule for g. So here it's just describing my transformation that's going on, and I need to write a rule for it. We did this back in the first semester when we were talking about our transformations, so let's brush up on it. So there's two transformations going on here. So if you remember back from first semester, I'm just going to write a rule for each one separately. So since I've got two here, I'm just going to do create two rules. So since I want to end with G, I'm going to start by creating a rule H of X for my first um, transformation, the vertical stretch by a factor of two. So if you remember, my vertical stretch is some number times my function. So in this case, it's by a factor of 2, so I'm doing 2 times my function f of x. So f of x is x to the 4th minus 2x squared. So I'm just multiplying 2 times my function. Distributing that 2 through, I get 2x to the 4th minus 4x squared and here is my rule for my first um, transformation that's occurring, my vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now I need to write a rule G that represents the next transformation going on, the translation 3 units up of the graph of f of x equals x to the 4th minus 2x squared. So my new function is going to be G of x. And remember, for a vertical translation, it's our function, in this case it's h of x plus 3. Because that's our new function after our first transformation. h of x, and then we're going up 3 units. So I have g of x equals 2x to the 4th minus 4x squared plus 3. So the transformed function is g of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 3. There's my answer. There's my rule for g. So once again, I just took, I took it one transformation at a time until I, I, I had done all my transformations. So I start with the first one they give me, call that h of x, write a rule for it. 
then I move on to the next transformation. I use that new function h of x and I created the rule g of x using that new function. So hopefully that makes sense. If neither one of those examples made sense, please reach out to me and I'll try to help you understand it better. Lastly, I'm going to go through this one kind of quick. You only have one problem like this on your assignment. And this example is in your book, so you can always check that out. It says the function v of x equals one-third x to the third minus x squared represents the volume in cubic feet of the square pyramid shown. The function wx equals v of 3x represents the volume in cubic feet when x is measured, measured in yards. Write a rule for w, find and interpret w of 10. So I went ahead and just took a screenshot of the solution from the book and put it in here so you guys could see it, but we've done this before. I'm just, I'm writing a rule for w, so I'm plugging in 3 of x for my x value. So they start off by understanding the problem. You're given a function v whose inputs are in feet and whose outputs are in cubic feet. You're given another function w whose inputs are in yards and whose outputs are in cubic feet. The horizontal shrink shown by w of x equals v of 3x makes sense because there are 3 feet and 1 yard. So they're just doing 3 times x, 3 feet and 1 yard. You are asked to write a rule for w and interpret the output for a given input. So write the transform function w of x and then find w of 10. So what we do, we take our function. one-third x cubed minus x squared and we are plugging in 3x for that. So one-third times 3x cubed minus 3x squared. And then we get 9x cubed minus 9x squared. So that's my rule for w. That's part of the problem, part of what they're asking me. Write a rule for w. Now it wants us to find w of 10. So I just plug 10 in to this new function right here, w of x. So w of 10 equals 9 times 10 cubed minus 9 times 10 squared. That'd be 9,000 minus 900, which is 8,100. So what that, mean, what that means, this is the interpretation of w of 10. When x is 10 yards, the volume of the pyramid is 8,100 cubic feet. Because w of 10 equals v of 30, you can check that your solution is correct by verifying that v of 30 equals 8100 and as you can see there that does check out. So here's our assignment for today pages 217, 218, number 17 through 27 odds. Um, this will be due on Monday which is February 22nd on canvas if you have any questions please let me know please reach out and i hope you guys have a great day today